So those are some cure strategies. So now let's talk what's happening here in Aarhus, the trials we have going. <clears throat> I'll show you the first data. This is not from Aarhus. This is from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Uh, this data was generated in a lab adjacent to the lab where I was working when I was in Chapel Hill before coming to Aarhus two years ago. In David Margolis's lab, what they did is they used a histone deacetylase inhibitor called varinostat in eight individuals. They dosed these individuals and then within a few hours they collected blood cells and they did PCR. They looked in these cells to see if they were transcriptionally activated. Had they been kicked? And you can see baseline in white, you can see after drug in black, and you can see this increase in um, signal in indicating that a kick did occur, and that's the key finding number one. I mean, almost five-fold increase in transcription. What they did not observe in this study was an increase in the amount of plasma in, or plasma virus, so RNA in the plasma. So this is cell-associated RNA. Once it's in the plasma, that, that would imply that a virion has been formed, so a more advanced pro part of the replication cycle. They didn't see that. <clears throat> so the studies that we have going here in Aarhus, um, I've got four names here for you. I've got the Dynamo, Clear, Reduct, and Teach. And I'll go through each one more carefully but the dynamo is pre-intervention to understand what's happening in these cells um, in the absence of intervention over time, just a longitudinal look to see how much variation is occurring. Clear is a kick agent. Um, Reduct is a kick agent combined with the therapeutic vaccine. And then teach is a kill agent. But I can't stand here and take credit for what I'm presenting. This is a massive team effort across the globe to generate the data that's being shown here. And I want to start with acknowledging that at the beginning of this part of the discussion. But first, let me just acknowledge the patient participants and say thank you to them. Because without them and their selfless act to participate in these types of trials, these boundar boundaries and these frontiers could not be opened and pushed forward. So thank you to them. I also want to acknowledge the technical and clinical staff members beyond the ones that are listed on the slides. Um, the names that are going to be listed are just ones that have been listed in author list on publications so far. So um, in the context of the CLEAR study, you can see many names, and I apologize for the few that are cut off there on the front of the letters, but they're from all over the planet. There's been five papers so far in the CLEAR study that you can read about what's happened. I'll just give you just a quick snapshot of it. We have people in Australia, the U.S., here in Aarhus. The Redux study, we have one paper from September of this year. People from Australia again, uh, Switzerland, Norway, Canada. The Dynamo study was the local study uh, looking at variation. And then the TEACH study, we have um, people from Belgium, the U.S., as well as other places here in Denmark. And let's just start with the CLEAR study. <clears throat> here we have a histone deacetylase inhibitor, panobenostat, given to individuals three times per week, every other week for eight weeks. So that means they got the drug three times this week, no drug next week, three times the week after, no drug three times the week after, till they had a total of four weeks with drug over the course of an eight-week period. <clears throat> when you look at cells from the peripheral blood and ask, was transcription initiated? Did RNA get kicked to be formed? You draw a line here at one, and that tells you anything above one is an increase over baseline. So these are fold changes. So you do have an increase, and it appears to be associated with the dosings. Here it could be the timing of the data collection that, that doesn't reveal that. But, but you have these increases in viral RNA production that are associated with the dosing. So you do have a kick. But furthermore, in this instance, we actually see plasma RNA. 
So I told you that that's just one step beyond cell-associated RNA in the virus replication cycle. So if you have 30 samples that were collected before the trial started, or thir or, and of these, 30% had RNA in them that was detected by this very sensitive assay. But then after you start the drug, the 168 samples that were collected during this time frame more than 54 percent of the samples were RNA positive. So there was definitely a kick in both the transcription as well as in plasma RNA levels in this study. So let's move to the Dynamo and Redux studies. So the Redux study is a two-part study. You have the kick study alone and then we have the vaccination with the kick. So we want to turn the cells on to be able to kill as soon as the kick happens. Now the part B of Reduc, the data is not complete, so I, I can't show you any of the results from that, but I will talk about part A here and tell you that when we infuse individuals with a histone deacetylase inhibitor called romadepsin once per week, three consecutive weeks, uh, we did see a kick effect. And that's shown here in this longitudinal graph you can see the arrows pointing to the three time points at which the drug was, uh, was infused. And you can see the line at one here, and above the line is above baseline. And you can see at the second and third infusion, very robust kick of the virus transcription. This is what we were hoping for. It was very exciting data, a 2.4 to 5-fold increase in the viral RNA. But even more exciting in this study was the plasma RNA levels that were observed. The study I showed you a moment ago, it was a super sensitive approach to try and find the RNA in the plasma. In this case, it was a standard run-of-the-mill clinical assay that's used all over the world. So it was readily detected in just a regular um, uh, plasma viral RNA test. So this was a very robust um, finding is very exciting, it's a big deal, um, but it's not without a challenge. So the trials that I've showed you to date have been single arm studies. There is no control arm to know what the variation is longitudinally in this system. So that brings forward the Dynamo study that we have. In the Dynamo study, we just simply took individuals taking antiretroviral therapy, did monthly blood tests for many different parameters, <clears throat> and one of those parameters is the RNA, just to look at how much of this transcription is happening in a stochastic or random fashion. And the data were fed into a complicated mathematical model that took into account the fact that there were repeated measures from the same individuals. This is the data that was fed into the model. The gray lines are the individuals. The black line is the median value. And it's some of the most exciting bland data you'll ever see because we have a nice, beautiful flat line. You know, normally you want things to move around. In this case, this was beautiful data because it tells us that we don't have to do six months of baseline measurements to get a sense of variation in a given individual before we do an intervention study. We know that there's relative continuity within each individual over time. Now there's some variance up and down, but it's, it's really nice data. And when we fed that into the model, we were able to generate this gray bar of natural variation and apply it retrospectively to the Dynamo data, or to the Redux data. So what you can see here is at the two time points, the kick that occurred actually kicked well above natural variation. It's a really nice uh, combination of the two trials. And what it does is it emphasizes both the retrospective and the prospective uh, benefit of a study like the Dynamo study. And the Redug um, con conclusion here is that there is transcription beyond normal variation. And the last study that I want to tell you about is TEACH. It's the toll-like receptor 9 enhancement of antiviral immunity in chronic HIV infection. <clears throat> the studies I've shown you to this point have been studies that have been single-site, 
the patients have been based here in Aarhus. Uh, this is our first multi-site study where in, we have patients at multiple locations um, and, and we will still be sending samples out around the world like in the other studies. But we're studying a drug called MGM1703. This is a molecule that is a toll-like receptor 9 agonist. It's in phase 3 testing for uh, treating colorectal cancer. And um, it generates a very broad, anti, uh, broad range of cytokines and antiviral activities. And if you recall from the beginning of the discussion, I talked about the sheet music cells, the dendritic cells. Well, these are the cells that are recognizing this molecule. So when it's taken up into the cell, into an endosome, then this little uh, white sections here, the uh, active component of the molecule, bind to the receptor and immune stimulation happens. Now, because this trial, um, and, and this is the trial design here um, in very simple form, the drug's being given twice a week for four consecutive weeks. <clears throat> what we're doing is we're collecting blood at many time points as well as looking in the intestines before and during the end of the treatment. Uh, regimen and asking what's happening both in the periphery and in the anatomical site. And this study is very close to complete, but because the analysis on, is ongoing, I'm unable to present any conclusions to you now. Um, but, but that is uh, one of the more uh, recent and, and a very exciting trial that we have going. So the HIV puzzle. We've talked about the impact, we've talked about the origins, we've talked about the epigenetics some cure strategies, as well as trials that are being conducted locally. So what is the picture from all this? Well, the picture is to bring us back to what today is, it's World AIDS Day and AIDS awareness and the importance of um, staying on focus with our strategy and our approaches to try and bring an HIV cure closer. And with that, I would like to say thank you for your attention and thank you for your support.